Good evening. Um, it's a great opportunity to be in front of such a great talent in this room uh, who is basically instrumental in driving open technologies and uh, accelerate the innovation. Um, I'm, I want to take this opportunity to kind of uh, go over like what Supermicro is seeing, what we are doing, and what we are doing with the OCP community and why it matters. We are in a very, very unique position in terms of our ability and in terms of our customers dealing with very small scale data centers all the way to hyperscalers. This gives us a different look for us in terms of you know, how the industry is evolving and what Supermicro could be doing it together. Today, if you take a look at the systems that are being built, we are not looking at a system alone. While it's very important, because of the scale at which we are operating, we are looking at a rack level and multiple racks put together at a cluster level and multiple clusters in a data center and the whole thing need to come together in order for us to deploy these large AI clusters at scale. Think of each of them is a building block and what we look at it is how we can put these building blocks together as a data center building blocks and how we can leverage on the community to bring those technologies so that we can scale easily, we can deploy efficiently, and we can accelerate uh, together. So community is going to be the key. So if you take a look at a data center, ultimately, the core of it is the compute. You're talking about CPU, GPU, network within that, the storage that go along with it, and how it's all interconnected. So, because of the amount of compute that we are bringing, generation over generation, this performance is actually more than few times. It's no longer like 5% or 10%, but if you take a look at you know, previous generation of the GPU to current generation, it's like multifold improvement. By, in order to do that, people are bringing all the compute close to the memory in order to accelerate which basically means the compute density is increasing. The TDP is like out of whack. You're talking about running into thousands of watts per uh, GPU or even like five to 600 watts per CPU. And you need to bring these clusters together in a way where the networking overhead is uh, minimized, so which basically makes it very complicated. So server node density is one thing. The TDP of these GPUs and CPUs that we need to pack within that, and when we are bringing it together in a data center level, you're talking about the network, which need to be highly performant, low latency, high throughput, and all that stuff, and the interconnect that go along with it. When you deploy in a data center, while we do all this, we need to make sure that it runs efficiently. This is where we are investing a lot, and this is where we are working with open community to incorporate all these uh, you know, different technologies so that we can accelerate the deployment while making sure that uh, the OPEX is, CAPEX and OPEX is minimized. So we want to be making like, you know, commercialization, commoditization, and democratization. This is how we are able to bring this, you know, thanks to the open community. So if you take a look at step further, with the hotter and hotter elements that are going within these compute facilities, one is the traditional way, which is, okay, we use air cooled. When it's not enough, we are going to put uh, the chill doors to be able to take care of it. That is not enough. We are putting direct-to-chip liquid cooling. And even within that, to take it to the next level, there are things that are coming with microfluids that are coming directly onto the chip. Different cooling fluids is basically being used to see what does it take for us to take care of hotter and hotter elements. And then, when you're putting it all together, you need to have a cooling distribution units, and eventually within the data center as we scale, we need to have chillers outside and whatnot. All these things need to work together. All these things need to be uh, coming from different partners, different ecosystem partners, and the innovation need to happen in that. And we are thankful that there is tremendous uh, contribution coming from the open community and the OCP standards that we are able to take advantage of in making this happen. So if you take a look at uh, what we are doing, obviously we are part of uh, different uh, open communities and we have uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, OCP inspired uh, designs of any tier ones, uh, par none. And this is, this is basically needed for us to provide the most optimal solutions. And if we have to do it everything from scratch, it's going to be difficult. So we depend a lot on the community and we bring those technologies into that. And 
not just that, um, you know, because it's so important and so critical, we even have uh, you know, one of our uh, employees as a part of the OCP advisory board, and we are part of different specifications, we are part, we are part of writing different white papers, and as I mentioned, we have the broadest product portfolio of any tier one OEMs, this like 23 different units in a compute as well as accelerated compute. So we really need to work together to kind of continue with that. When I mean, honestly speaking, the immersion cooling can be a lot more efficient, but because of various reasons, we are going in stages. So today, all the accelerated compute is direct-to-chip liquid cooling, but at the same time, immersion cooling is something that we have worked again with the OCP to ensure that we are able to uh, work with either Intel, Submer, and uh, others uh, to bring it. Um, then, other thing is about standard compute platforms. So DC MHS is one of the standards that, again, come from the OCP community, and a lot of customers are asking for it. So we took that and incorporated it into an Intel-based and as well as AMD-based and a single and dual socket, again, giving an option for the customers to take advantage of this. And when it comes to AI, Supermicro is the, you know, let's say, broadest portfolio provider and have been engaging with customers of all different types. So we have customers who can take advantage of air-cooled, liquid-cooled, but at the same time, we've been working with uh, Intel and AMD and NVIDIA closely. So on a compute side of it, we could use either Intel or AMD processor, you know, whether it's uh, Granite Rapids or Emerald Rapids or on the Genova or Turin on the AMD CPU side. When it comes to GPUs, a plethora of choices. I mean, we're talking about, uh, you know, H100, H200, B200, now B300. On the AMD side of it is the MI325 and MI355. So all these things we are able to do mix and match, and it's only possible because of the you know, OCP-inspired designs that we are tracking. And in terms of understanding like, you know, how the data centers can take advantage of this and how the total cost of ownership, we actually work with OCP in defining a tool that takes, care of, that takes an advantage of all these different parameters and give a starting point for the customers who want to kind of go with a data center. Mind you, the larger data centers, they do a lot of research, but the smaller ones are the ones that we can actually go and help. Uh, given the fact that these data centers are located in various different locations, we need to ensure that we take, uh, we take a uh, note of you know, what is the you know, yearly temperature range and what's the humidity, you know, what is the power in that region. And all these things we need to take into consideration to come up with uh, a, a, a tool that people can take advantage of. Why we are doing all these things? First of all, when you're spending so much money, we want to ensure that the time to online is important. We want to bring it quick. Again, standards become an important factor in that one. Technology, we want to always take advantage of the latest and greatest technologies so that we can you know, bring the uh, benefits of that to a wider audience. And then reduction in cost. This is where the democratization comes into picture. So this is what we are doing. But then when you take a look at uh, <clears throat> uh, what is being done with what innovations that we are bringing, you know, obviously efficiencies and everything is going to be part of it, green IT, but the partners of Supermicro who actually benefited from it, it would be great to kind of hear from them. With that, I would like to invite Tamana Seth from Crusoe. She's a vice president of cloud at Crusoe. Thank you. Thanks, Tamana. Thank you, Vic. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us today and a very big thank you to Vic and Supermicro for our wonderful collaboration and partnership. I'm Tamana Sait, VP of Engineering for Crusoe Cloud. So at Crusoe, we are working tirelessly to bend the arc of intelligence towards sustainability. The AI growth also comes with a challenge and responsibility to build it effectively and efficiently. So how do we enable this? The revolution of AI demands a totally new approach, massive scale, unprecedented speed, and sustainable operations. At Crusoe, our mission is to accelerate the abundance of energy and intelligence. And Supermicro is a leader in OCP-recognized hardware. So our shared goal is to build the world's most efficient AI infrastructure by combining our innovative Crusoe cloud with the OCP-recognized hardware from Supermicro. So at Crusoe, we actually believe 
that businesses need much more than just technology. They need a robust, resilient, reliable, and an efficient AI infrastructure. And Crusoe is building and delivering this through our vertically integrated AI ecosystem. Let's take a quick look at this. So we start with the sustainable energy sources that are used to power our AI data centers. And Crusoe has successfully secured access to innovative and environmentally aligned energy sources such as wind, solar, geothermal, to name a few. And with this, we are able to align our operations with the future of energy and the environment. The next layer is our AI data centers. And as you all know, Crusoe has set a new bar for AI data centers. And we are continuing to grow and expand with our Crusoe-owned data centers for our Crusoe cloud in megawatt scale to gigawatt scale for individual customers. But we all know that building an AI data center and bringing an AI data center online is a monumental task. And several inefficiencies can slow you down. But our goal is to accelerate this process without compromising quality. And that is the challenge we, Supermicro and Crusoe, are tackling together. Yeah. So our next layer is our AI cloud platform. This is where we bring everything together to deliver our Crusoe AI cloud platform that provides compute, network, and storage solutions to the businesses to build their AI models and their applications at scale. We also provide different layers of the software so that the businesses can focus on their workloads. And this is where we are partnering with Supermicro because of the deep expertise and their hardware that's based on OCP hyperscale designs that enables us to bring standardized, reliable hardware quickly into our Crusoe cloud. And I do want to highlight that it's not just about the hardware. It's the shared philosophy to leverage open standards to build a reliable, resilient, efficient AI infrastructure. And the last layer of our AI ecosystem, of our vertically integrated ecosystem, is our managed AI solutions and services that businesses could very easily deploy and adopt in their workflows without having to worry about the underlying infrastructure. And this is what we call our vertically integrated AI ecosystem for Crusoe, uh, from start to finish, from electrons to tokens. So what you see here is a very high-level view of the different stages and steps that we go through as we do a new GPU turn-up for the Crusoe cloud. And as you can see, there are many different inefficiencies that kick in as we go through this process. But the results speak for themselves. And we have been able to successfully 4x the number of GPUs deployed as we do this new GPU turn-up or deployment in our Crusoe cloud. So how did we achieve these efficiencies? We have achieved these efficiencies through streamlined supply chain, and then also by deploying standardized, reliable hardware in the Crusoe cloud. And we are very proud of our partnership with Supermicro, and we have successfully brought H200s, B200s, and GB200s to our Crusoe cloud. So there's one more aspect that I did want to highlight here, and that is as you are building a reliable Crusoe cloud or a reliable cloud platform, testing and validation are very important. And what you see here is the extensive testing and validation we go through as we do our new GPU turnups, all the way from extensive burn-in testing, nickel testing, we stress test every single node. Uh, we do a lot of load testing, disaster recovery testing, we also partner with the PyTorch Llama team to run the training workloads for an extended period of time. So to wrap this up, I would say we are excited. We are lo really looking forward to grow our participation in the OCP community. We are implementing OCP telemetry services and deploying them in our Crusoe cloud. 
In addition to that, we're looking forward to participate in the hardware fault management work streams. We are also looking forward to participate in the NeoCloud work streams and collaborate with OCP as they plan for their third version of Ready for AI. Uh, in addition to this, we truly believe that open standards are the foundation of building a sustainable AI infrastructure. Look forward to growing our participation, sharing our learnings, and collaborating as we embrace the next challenge and embrace and solve it together. Thank you.